Does the Irish Red Ale make for a good whiskey? Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we are embarking on beer number two of the beer to whiskey series. Now this series is all about to see if we can convert a beer into a good whiskey. Now first up let's thank today's sponsor and today's sponsor is Kettle Kroll. Now Kettle Kroll generously donated the ingredients as well as the brewing system that we used to make the beer. Now I'll link, I'll put a link down to their website in the description as well as links to both the brew system as well as the recipe kits that I used to make the distiller's beer as well as the actual beer. Thank you Kettle Kroll for being so generous and supplying us with the ingredients for this beer in the Beer to Whiskey series. Now previously we did a Imperial Russian Stout you want to check out that video i'll put a link up here to that video where you can check out if a russian imperial stout makes a good whiskey before we get into the actual process that we took to get to the point where we have the whiskey and doing the tasting and all that other stuff i just want to clarify a few points with regards to the actual purpose of this series now on the previous video i got quite a few questions regarding the the validity of this experiment and why am I actually doing it. The distiller's beer is not hopped at all. This is why I do two completely separate batches. Both batches undergo the exact same process when it comes to the actual making of the distiller's beer as well as the beer or the wort. Um, both get mashed in, both get boiled. The only difference is for that 60 minutes during the boil for the beer, we have a hop addition. For the 60 minutes of the boil for the whiskey, we do not have hops. We just let it boil. We try and keep the parameters as close as possible. Number two, is it to see if you can distill an Irish red ale? The answer is no. It's to see if that grain bill that we use when we make an Irish red ale will translate over into a good whiskey. No, it is not to see if when you distill a or you buy Irish red ale from your local liquor store and you put it into your still, is it going to make a good whiskey? No, it's to see if we deviate away from your standard grains that normally gets used to make whiskey, meaning corn, rye and barley. If we start branching into different kinds of uh, speciality malts and that type of stuff. Does that enhance the flavor of a whiskey or does it make the whiskey bad? So yeah, that's the purpose of these videos. And then number three, the side-by-side -side comparison between the beer and the whiskey is not there to see if the whiskey tastes like the beer or the beer tastes like the whiskey. No, the hops in the beer will change the taste of the beer completely when you compare it to the actual whiskey that we're making. But it is to see if there's any malt character within the beer that translate into the whiskey. So it's just a nice fun way to see if the malted and speciality grains that's used within the beer transfers over into the final product. So yeah. With that out of the way, now let's get into the actual process. So first of all, we started off by making the beer. Now this started about four weeks ago when we started by, first of all, getting our strike water up to temperature. Once we had our strike water up to temperature, we then mashed in our grains. Now, as you see there, this is a very small grain bill because this is a partial mash kit meaning that the majority of our sugars is not going to come from the starch conversion but actually from two products one being dry malt extract and the other one being a liquid malt extract that's another question i was asked 
on the previous video, can you use a partial mash kit to make a whiskey? And the answer is absolutely yes. Whether it makes a good whiskey, we'll find out a bit later. So when after we had the grain smashed in for 90 minutes, we then proceeded to sparge out the grains. Now the sparging process, we sparged to volume. All I did is I subtracted the amount that I needed for the liquid malt extract as well as the dry malt extract. Once we reached our target volume, we then took our liquid malt extract as well as our dry malt extract and put it into the boiler. Gave it a good mix, then proceeded to heat up the boiler to get to our rolling boil. So the hop addition for this beer was a quite a simple one. We started at a 15 minute and a, a 60 minute hop addition. So 60 minute means the moment we hit a rolling boil, we added the first hop addition and then we added the second hop addition, allowed it, uh, well, then added the second hop addition at 15 minutes left in the boil, switched off the boiler, and then we left the wort to cool down in the boiler overnight. Once it's cooled down, we then proceeded to transfer it into a primary fermentation vessel. After transferring it to primary fermentation, we pitched our yeast, and the yeast that we used for this was US05, which is a nice and simple ale yeast. We then went ahead and we transferred the beer into secondary after it was left to ferment for a week and a half. After a week and a half went into secondary, that was left for another week to ensure that all sediment and uh, yeast drops out. We then prepared our uh, priming sugars by just heating up a small little pot with a hundred grams of our priming sugar as well as a hundred mils of water. Brought it to a rolling boil, kept it there for about 15 minutes uh, just to kill off any buggies that's present in the sugar or in the water. Because remember, this is a low, a lower ABV beer, so the chance of infection is very high. So yeah, just tip, ensure that you always sanitize when making a beer. After we transferred it to secondary, we then went into the bottling. We bottled the beer up by adding our priming sugar mixture into the bottom of the bucket then added the beer on top so it all mixed through nicely as it was transferring we then bottled the beer left it to carbonate in the bottles or condition in the bottles for another week went to the fridge and now we have the beer in front of us here now for the whiskey whiskey was done exactly the same way as the beer we started by mashing in our grains we then added our, we then sparged our grains, we added the liquid malt extract as well as the dry malt extract. We then got it to a rolling boil, left it there for 60 minutes, turned off the heat, left it overnight, and then transferred into primary. We transferred into secondary, secondary went into the still, and then the distilling happened. Now the distilling was quite fun because this was a low ABV beer and I did not account for that, so I screwed up. I took my normal four shots and heads cut of 250 mils that I do for the majority of my other washes that I try and get as close to 10% ABV in the wash as possible. Thus, taking a rather large chunk of my heart when I did the cuts. So yeah, I lost about 10 to 15% of my heart's cut to my four shots on my head. So yeah, in the future, just uh, a reminder for myself just double check your ABV before and your fractional distillation volumes before we actually start doing the cuts so yeah that doesn't happen again now when we started the distillation of the initial smell that came off the still was freshly baked banana bread so yeah I was quite happy to smell that and I thought that will make a very interesting which whiskey but unfortunately, the moment we started getting first drips, that smell completely disappeared and it changed over into a freshly baked bread and then transitioned into the cuts, transferring from like a, a whole wheat cookie into an oatmeal cookie and into like a almost a custard vanilla type of smell. And then we hit tails. We blended everything back together, ended up with a product 
of one liter at 70%. We then proofed it down to 55%. I accidentally overshot the amount and ended up with 53%. And now we are here with our whiskey. So this is 1.3 liters at 53% of our Irish red ale. Yes, it's a low yield, but that is because it is a low ABV beer that we put into the, into the boiler. That's not getting as high a yield as we normally do. And then the beer over here, sitting at a ABV of about 4.5%. If you stuck around this far, please remember to hit that subscribe button and uh, ring the little bell icon so you don't miss any of the new videos that we are uploading. And uh, please drop a comment down below for a suggestion for the next beer we should try in the Beer to Whiskey series. Now it's time for that moment we've all been waiting for to see if this beer will pop or fizzle. Now we're going to pour the beer into the glass and see if we have a nice head. Hopefully it has carbonated well. We did have a nice cold spell over the last couple of weeks. So yeah, let's see if the carbonation works. It's been cold crashing now for two days. So after all that talking and that trademark bearded and bored pop on the beer, it's now time for us to actually taste these two compared to each other. So first up, the beer. Now the beer has a nice red amber hue to it. Um, a very malt forward smell. Keep in mind that the majority of the sugars that is in this beer came from the liquid malt extract as well as the dry malt extract so i'm expecting it not to have that nice rounded uh, flavors that you get if you use an all grain nice fruity nose yeah oh it has a nice buttery um, taste to it very malt heavy you do get a little bit of the speciality grains and that type of stuff not a very complex beer but a really good beer nonetheless now it's up for the whiskey now the whiskey we made as you saw in the video exactly the same method as the beer we just didn't hop the wort so on the nose first up it is like a freshly baked sour bread with a slight hint of cinnamon a uh, nice cinnamony hit it transitions into almost like a sweet oatmeal breakfast cereal type of deal so on the taste starts off very sweet as it hits your tongue as it starts moving its way back you get that nice hints of the the oatmeal um, bowl that you just poured sugar over and it finishes in this nice crisp clean malt flavor so i don't know if that was from the liquid malt extract or the dry malt extract or maybe from some of the speciality grains. I don't know. But yeah, it's a very good white dog. Not as good as the stout, but still a very good whiskey. So it's definitely a step up from just doing a standard single malt or barley whiskey. We'll definitely be making this whiskey again. Just keep in mind, if you're going to use the exact same recipe, like down in the description, um, you're going to have a very low ABV uh, beer that you're going to be putting into your still so you're not going to get a very high yield so i will if i redo this recipe double up on the recipe and uh, ensure that i bump up my gravities a little bit so i can, can get a better yield out of it and probably do exactly the same that i did with the single malt whiskey that i made where we fermented on the grain with the, the spent grains just to pull that last little bit of sugar out so yeah a very nice whiskey a very nice beer and yeah just want to thank the sponsor again thank you kettle crawl for sponsoring the brewing equipment as well as the recipe and the ingredients to make this uh, video possible so 
If you want to try this out, please check the link down in the description for Kettle Kral. They are a homebrew and distilling supplier. They also manufactured manufacture registered stills. Please check out the link down in the description if you want any of these uh, kits to try out. So yeah, and as always, thank you very much for watching and have a lack of day.